If you make unit related errors now and then, you are not alone. I have done such errors so many times. And while making this video, I actually found one that I have survived 15 years in my printed material. I will tell you in this video how I found that error. It may help you to avoid some errors if you understand that every single equation that accurately describes anything in our universe obeys one very simple rule. The units must be consistent. To make sure you understand this fully, let's go through the following six questions. Number one. Can you add one apple to one orange? No. Two. Does every number in an equation have a unit? No. Three. How weird can units be? Very. Four. When is the unit liter of ethanol the same as the unit liter of water? It depends. Five. Can you add one apple to one orange? No, but... And finally six. Why are dimensionless numbers, for example, Reynolds number, so powerful? So question one, why can't you add one apple to one orange? Because to be allowed to add two numbers, these numbers must have the same unit. Here are some equations where things are added together or subtracted from each other. In all these equations, the units must match exactly. In making this video, I thought I should include a complicated equation and added a rather nasty looking equation for mass transfer in spherical coordinates. The equation I had printed in our handbook for many years looked like this. This is actually wrong and you can prove that by analyzing the units. The derivative of concentration with respect to time has the unit mol per cubic meter and second and thus all the other terms must have that unit. The next term is okay. The velocity VAR has the unit meter per second and the partial derivative of concentration with respect to distance has the unit mol per meter four, giving us the unit mol per cubic meter and second. But there is something wrong with the next term. Phi is an angle and for now you can think of that as unitless. Well, it's kind of a fraction, but more on that later. So we get meter, uh, meter per second multiplied with mole per cubic meter and get mole per square meter and second. This clearly does my, not make any sense and must be wrong. As it happens, in the correct equation found on another page in the handbook, the velocity should be divided with r here, which gives us the correct unit. The take home message here is that using unit analysis, you can a understand what units you need to use for the different terms in your equation and b prove that an equation is faulty by showing that the units are inconsistent. You cannot however prove that an equation is correct by using unit analysis. Nature may choose to be much more complicated than what our equations say. Question 2. Do all numbers have units? No, they don't. If you, for example, take the equation for distance traveled, s equals s0 plus v0 times t plus a times t squared divided by 2, that you might recognize from school, the two twos in this equation have no unit. The same is true, for example, for the numbers spelled out in these equations. Examples of places in an equation where you often find unitless or dimensionless numbers or ratios are exponents, expressions you take the logarithm of, and the result of trigonometric functions, such as sine and cosine. Speaking of trigonometry, a degree is just a ratio multiplied with whatever arbitrary value was chosen to represent a full circle, 2 pi and 360 degrees being the two most common choices. If we, however, look at Antoine's equation, a curve fit for vapor pressure over pure substance, the three fitting parameters all have units. If pressure is in Pascal and temperature is in Celsius, the parameter A must have the strange unit base 10 logarithm of Pascal. The parameter C must have the same unit as T, so Celsius, since it's added to T. 
Finally, the parameter b must have the unit Celsius multiplied with the base 10 logarithm of Pascal. Truly a rather weird unit. So why is the units of the fitting parameters important? Well, if someone has fitted the same equation using pound per square inch psi as the unit for pressure and Fahrenheit as the unit for temperature, we need to understand the units of the fitting parameters if we are to change the values so we can use Pascal and Celsius instead. To change from temperature in Celsius to temperature in Kelvin, simply add 273.15 to parameter C. As an important side note, please remember that the difference in Celsius is always numer numerically identical to difference in Kelvin. So, thus our answer to question 3 is that units can be as weird as they need to be. You know by heart that volume can be measured in cubic meters, but why is that? Well, if you have a box with breadth B, depth D, and height H, you know that you multiply these three numbers together to get the volume of the box. V equals B times D times H. But if you look at the units, you get meter times meter times meter, which gives you cubic meter. Let's say that you have found a curve fit for the distance a ball has traveled in an experiment and that you find that your best fit looks like S equals K times T to the power of 0 0.736 with S in meters and T in seconds. What is the unit of K? Well, shuffle around to get K equals T to the power of 0 0.736 divided with S. And remembering that the variable s is not the same thing as the unit seconds, s, we get the unit for k as seconds to the power of 0 0.736 per meter. Truly a weird unit. Question 4. Is a liter always a liter? Yes and no, depending on the context. Sometimes it's not enough to know that you have a liter. You need to know what substance you have a liter of. If you have a one cubic meter container filled with large stones, you can pour in quite a lot of sand into that container. So even though the container was full, you still can fit more in there. The same is true is if you add one liter of water to one liter of ethanol, you get less than two liters of liquid. Thus, as question five, we can modify our previous statement and say that Yes, you can add one apple to one orange if you shift your perspective and think of them as items or fruits. If you have one apple and one orange, you have two fruits, right? Let me pause you there and add that this is why equations like this make sense. You can add the molar weight of one calcium atom to the molar weight of two chloride ions uh, since one mole of calcium chloride consists of one mole of calcium and two mole of chloride. Just in the same way that you can make a fruit salad out of several different fruits. This may sound trivial, but we're about to get to a crucial point about the difference between true unitless numbers and ratios that have no dimension. To get there, ask yourself what the units are for rainfall and for soil moisture. I would guess that you know that we typically measure rainfall in meters per year, but meters of what? What we mean with that unit is cubic meter of water per square meter of land and year, and we abbreviate that as meter per year. For soil moisture, we typically use the unit cubic meter of water per cubic meter of soil. Soil moisture is thus a dimensionless number, cubic meter divided with cubic meter, and has no dimension. However, it is crucially important that we take cubic meter of water per cubic meter of soil when we calculate soil moisture and not vice versa. So while the two twos in the equation s equals at squared divided by 2 are truly unitless, we might want to clarify that the dimensionless number soil moisture has the unit cubic meter of water per cubic meter of soil to avoid confusion and errors. As our sixth and last question. Have you figured out yet why dimensionless numbers, such as Reynolds number, are so powerful in explaining our world? To reiterate what 
we said in the beginning, every single equation that accurately describes anything in our universe obeys one very simple rule. The units must be consistent. But this also means that you can shuffle around your equation and translate it into an expression using dimensionless numbers. Using dimensionless numbers, we comparatively easily can summarize and compare vast numbers of experiments and find the best fit, regardless of the magnitude. As an example, in flow in a pipe, you might understand, perhaps intuitively, that the diameter of the pipe, the velocity of the flow, the density of the fluid and the viscosity of the fluid are important for the flow characteristics. But if we multiply the diameter in meters with the velocity in meter per second and the density in kilogram per cubic meter and divide that with the viscosity in Pascal seconds, we get the dimensionless number Reynolds number, which has proven so powerful in predicting when the flow is laminar and when it becomes turbulent. Our world is often very complicated, but using dimensionless numbers has often proven to be a very successful method for finding curve fits for really complicated systems. This is why you can find so many dimensionless numbers in books about heat transfer, mass transfer, and chemical engineering. Because remember, every equation can be transferred into an equation that uses dimensionless number. So if you have something, uh, a, an equation that describes the world, you can change that into a dimensionless equation.